Hi lovely Leo, welcome to your reading for May 2021. This is Love and General Reading and it is for Leo. Ooh, hello. Oh my God. Who cares who it's for? Look, we've got the Ace of Cups and it just dropped on the floor. Wowzers, Leo. Okay, this is for Leo. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, for cross watchers, for anybody who wants an Ace of Cups and happen to be passing, here you go. It just went swing, 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 plop. It's going on the table. Okay, Leo, if this resonates, there will be an extended woo reading as normal. Your cards are very jumpy. And the link to the extended will be in the description box. Okay, let's see what's what. Need a few more cards. This is looking very tidy. Very nice. Very major arcanery. Okay, what does Leo need to know? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Cross Watchers. Nope, not that one. Yes. Wow. Okay, cool. So just my rickety seat. As we come into May, Leo, we're coming in off the back of a full moon in Scorpio, which has got everybody spooked. I've done enough of these readings this month to know that the full moon in Scorpio is, yeah, it's a deep, full moons in Scorpio always are for me. They're kind of, you know, I always liken it to taking a bucket and taking it right down to the bottom of the well and saying, show me what is on the bottom of my well. That is literally what it's going to do. So as we enter May, I feel like there is a bit of a sense of you being a little shell-shocked by what you've seen. Okay, I'm just going to put the curtain across because there is a car window outside, which is dazzling. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, I feel like you're going to be a bit shocked by what you've seen, Leo, or what you've felt, or the tension that you've felt. And... There's some great cards here on the table, as we've seen with the Ace of Cups, but we come into the month with a sense of maybe exhaustion. Ten of Wands is when you are at the limit of your taking on abilities. <clears throat> so it can happen, like at work, if somebody keeps dropping their duties on you. You know, can you do this? Can you pick that up? You're so efficient. Can you do this? Can you do that? They can't handle it. Can I just give that to you? And you're just like, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Especially as Leos, I think, because Leos are often um, gifted with leadership skills and the ability to manage a lot and have a lot of really good stamina. People don't realize that a Leo is okay until you get to that 10th wand and then it's like, done. You know, can't do this. Can't, can't, can't do it. It's that kind of feeling. Now, when you combine that with the Nine of Swords, there's some mental energy. It's a bit up in your head. It usually starts off with, I can do this, I can manage this. And if it's to do with relationships, you know, I can, I can control this, I can make this happen, I can, I can, I can. But what if this happens? What if that happens? Future thinking, sometimes jealousy or paranoia, it's that kind of four o'clock in the morning cycle of dreams and thinking and yeah that's that card okay now interestingly know this is going somewhere good as well I just want to put that in because I'm going to deal with this first because I think this is how it goes I think you come in from April off this Scorpio full moon better than the other signs to be able to cope with it because Leo's Leos, along with Scorpios, actually, um, can deal with difficult things. You can deal with the truth. You can deal with dropping the bucket to the bottom of the well. But at the same time, it still disturbs you like it would anybody else. And then next to the Ten of Wands and the Nine of Swords, we've got the Moon. This is very interesting. Of course, again, it's full moon. Um, now, in May, we have a full moon total lunar eclipse in Sagittarius on the 26th of May and I feel like 
as with a lot of the other signs actually we kind of kick off this reading <coughs> with the full moon in Scorpio on the 27th of May and it arcs to the full moon that we full moon lunar eclipse at the sorry 27th of April and it arcs to the full moon lunar eclipse at the end of May it's like a full moon cycle and full moons kind of are about what is hidden it's Neptune energy, it's Cancerian energy, Piscean energy, that whole kind of, you know, I'm trying to describe Pisces and Cancer energy, but I think it looks a bit, I always describe it actually, and this is really bad. You know when you go to a pub and there's a folk song on, and and it's <laughs> it's been me in the past, and there's a woman at the front who's going crazy with no shoes on, maybe no bra, and they're like, yeah, like that. Think of that energy and then make it kind of behind a veil and you've got that moon energy. You've got this going on behind and I think what it's doing is fueling secret worries and secret fears and things that are deep and subliminal and shadowy. Leo, I think in short, your shadow side is ruling the roost for at least the first half of May as you come out of that Scorpio full moon. Okay. It's a lot easier to deal with that if you know it. That's my thoughts on it. If you know that's happening, I'm not saying not to invest in it and not to believe yourself, because obviously you should, but it's just easier, isn't it? Forewarned is forearmed. You know that there's something afoot and you know that it's scorpionic and you know that, particularly as well, if it's to do with either working in terms of career progression or relationship in terms of relationship progression, know that you have some secret fears that may be holding you back. You may be projecting this onto another person, but I feel like it's holding a mirror up directly to you, Leo, and asking you, how much of this is me? That'd be a good question to ask yourself while you're kind of in the throes of it, rather than, this is a card of projection. <clears throat> Rather than worrying, which is the ultimate in projecting, often when we find ourselves, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna have some of my vitamin drink. Phew. That's shot. <clears throat> when we find ourselves worrying a lot, using up a lot of mental energy, we are often trying to distract ourselves or the brain is trying to distract us from what is really there, from what is really in our heart, from what is in our gut, in our soul, in our body. Usually it's something to do with your shadow side. <coughs> and something maybe to do with your throat chakra because I was fine before I started this video, Leo. <coughs> and now I'm not. Okay, one moment. Right, so we have those three cards, then we move up. High Priestess energy, this is using the energy of Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, that kind of full moon, woman at a folk thing, party thing, and it's making it yours. So this might require you to do meditation, it might require you to, I don't know however people get into their High Priestess mode, and I think sometimes we make it a bit too sacred. It is sacred, but sacred doesn't have to mean, you know, swinging incense and sage and all that stuff. It can do if that's you, but you know, sometimes for me, it's driving a van, having a shower, cleaning the loo, or, you know, lying under a blanket, eating chocolate, having a nice cup of tea. That can evoke your high priestess energy. Going for a nature walk, if you're allowed to at the moment, or, nothing you know it doesn't have to be ceremonial you don't have to have an altar you don't have to have a backdrop of pomegranates or a hat or even a crescent moon at your ankle you don't need to have any of that but you can still get into that energy um, i'm just noticing here we've got one black pillar one white pillar i'm thinking of the cancerian card the chariot again even though it's not here on the table I'm feeling chariot energy for you. And chariot energy is when you're trying to go in two different directions at once. 
And I think you're gonna have a sense of this, especially in the first half. Then as we move, we got a new moon in Taurus, I think, on about the 11th, something like that. I think that's good for everybody. I think everybody needs that because it puts a bit of reality into things. Yeah. Then we've got the sun moving into Gemini on the 20th, which I think is quite a, it makes you more communicative. It means that this stuff that you've been storing up from the Scorpio full moon, you're gonna wanna talk about it, write about it, sing about it, doodle about it, do whatever you do about it, journal it, whatever. And again, you don't have to be sacred about it and you know, make it affirmations in an amazing book or any of that. You might write on the back of an envelope, you might not write at all. You might go and you know, do a silent scream in the toilet. Whatever it is, try and get it out there. And I feel like for some of you, this is communicating with a significant other as well. You may not have the ability to put your feelings into words until you get that new moon. It just feels like, I don't know, it just feels like, it feels like there's something you need to get off your chest to the other person but it feels like there's something going on with that other person that means they might not be able to hear it properly, if that makes sense. Okay, now then. Oh, hang on a minute, sorry. New moon in Taurus, not in Gemini. Can I just correct myself? I'm a Pisces, what can I say? If you watch my dailies, you'll know I always, always get the dates of everything. The new moon in um, Gemini is in June and we're all looking forward to that, but we're not there yet. So I'm gonna put that over there. New moon in Taurus on the 11th, okay? Just know that at that time, you are going to be more able to express yourself in a more kind of realistic way. And then, then we're gonna have that eclipse. That's when we really get to it, 26, and then Mercury goes retrograde about two days later. Woohoo! You're welcome, says the universe. Okay, then we move into big major arcana in the Ace of Cups. You still with me? These two cards, the world and temperance, you are moving into a new cycle, as are many of us, from May the 26th, that's, you're gonna look back and say that's when it started. And frankly, that's when it got better as well. Remember with temperance, Sagittarian energy, but also someone third eye chakra, very connected, crown chakra. It feels, it's my crown chakra, mine. It feels like you finally, things start to finally come together, but then Mercury goes retrograde. So just know that things will come together and then they'll kind of swirl around like a bit of a fairground carousel. Just stick with that energy until we get through the second half of June. This is not just for May. This is a reading, and it has been for every sign, that kind of carries us almost to the end of June. From that Scorpio full moon, we get to the end of June when Mercury goes direct again, spits us back out into the world. Temperance also says to be play, playful with the energies, as only you can, Leo. So if you are in a difficult situation with your significant other, if you are in a quandary, a difficult situation about work, because some of you are, just know that it would help you if you could maintain some kind of playful stance along with the seriousness. The seriousness is gonna take care of itself. You bring the playtime, okay? Now, in the extended reading, I'm gonna look at the other person, how they feel about you, because there's not much here about the other person for a start. So for some of you, that other person may be quiet, preoccupied, you may be in separation from them and also looking at a bit of your work life here because we've got the seven of pentacles, contemplating whether you've put too much energy into something, and this could be work or relationship. A workman leaning on his hoe and counting his money, counting his harvest. Have I reaped what I've sown? That is a question you will start to ask yourself after the full moon at the end of May. Will I reap what I sow? Is it worth continuing with this? Eight of Pentacles, keep on keeping on. It's also the work card, it's putting effort, it's turning up every day, it's knocking out the Pentacles. It's kind of the meat and potatoes side of all the spiritual stuff. Here's who I am, here's where I show up to work, 
Here's what I wear, look like, speak, do, and affect. Here's what I achieve. Okay, is this what I want? Is this person who I want? Those are the questions. And then we run into this Ace of Cups. This is gorgeous. Particularly good when it falls on the floor at the beginning of a reading, I have to say. I'm fond of a card that makes its way to the floor vol vol voluntarily, okay? Ace of Cups is big loving. I like this. It's big loving coming in for you. It's also self-loving. I don't know why I keep saying loving. It reminds me of that film, Superbad, McLovin'. Just think to yourself, any love you have for yourself is like this fountain and then any extra can pour out on somebody else. But you create it just for you. That's the feeling. Overall energy cards, I got the King of Wands on the side together with the Knight of Swords. Nice. Sudden intro of somebody. Now this could be a fellow fire sign, so um, Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, or somebody who is very confident in themselves. It feels like you are dealing here, and if you're single, this could be someone you would meet who is perhaps quite good in their body, good at dancing, or just comfortable in their own skin. Can be charismatic. Can go anything from confident right up to player. You need to decide that for yourself. This is a person that either suddenly comes back, because Mercury is retrograde, suddenly steps up, or just suddenly you meet. I like that energy a lot. I will also have a look at that in the extended reading. Okay, oracle card time, not that one. Oh, I like this for you. You get the card of peace, making peace with where you are. That is gonna be key to you at different times of the month in May. Making peace with not knowing, making peace with knowing, making peace with feeling jiggity and jaggedy and all kind of up in your head and then making peace with what you've got. Oh my God, I knew you were gonna get that card. Healing with the angels, oracle card, you get playfulness. Leo, you are full of playfulness, okay? You don't have to do much to access your playfulness. Use it to help you in May, okay? I'm gonna go do your extended reading. The link will be in the description box. Do like, share and subscribe, Leo, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.